Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. We're three kings of Orienta, bearing gifts we traverse afar. Fields and fountains, more and mountains flowing yonder star. Oh, I think we went a bit off there. I think I did something else. <laughs> Hello boys and girls, it's Poppy here. And it's Esther and we're excited because we're decorating for Christmas. We love this time of the year and we're getting our nativity set up and running. It is so much fun. We've got a little cute little sheep that's in the stable and gorgeous little baby Jesus in his manger and Mary and Joseph and the little... Oh, Esther... I can't find it. I know what you're going to say. Where are the three wise um, men? What did I do with them last year? What did I do with them? I, I packed don't them away. Know. Hmm. It's a mystery. Let me find them. Okay, I'm going upstairs to the attic and checking. And I'll go to my glitter box while you have a look. Come on, boys and girls. Let's see what I've got in my glitter box today. Today in my glitter box, I've got an awesome activity book. Today, before I came to Esther's house, I was doing this awesome, awesome maze. I also got to do a special Mary's house. And I got to do a delicious scone recipe. It was so delicious. There's also dress up and you get to do some investigating like a detective but also you get to be an archaeologist because it's an awesome activity about bible times and being an archaeologist there are so many things to do in this amazing activity book which matches and goes with amazing free story of mary's big news you don't want to miss out it is an amazing audio chapter book we will leave the links below so you can download the free audio chapter book which has 10 chapters and you get to hear the story of Mary and baby Jesus. Plus, you can also buy the activity book that goes with it. It will be so awesome and just in time for Christmas. I hope you get it boys and girls, you'll love it. Until next time, bye! Poppy, I found it! <gasps> Look, there's the little box. Look how cute it is. Where were they, Esther? Well, I think I did something wrong. I put them in an Easter box instead <laughs> of the Christmas box. That's funny. I know. But they're here. Aren't they cute? <gasps> oh, I love it. And I love how they got to follow the star. That is so special. It is. <gasps> you know what? I what? have a really special story. <gasps> I love stories. I know, but this is a different kind of story. It's called the Emu in the Sky. An emu in the sky? Yes, but it does have something to do with the wise men. <gasps> kind of. It's hard to explain. I have to read it to you. Want to listen? I would love to listen. But first, didn't you interview someone special? Yes, I did. Here in Australia, we celebrate NAIDOC Week. And that is celebrating the history, the culture and achievement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So the story is actually Aboriginal. <gasps> I love it! And the little girl I interviewed did something special for the story. Ooh, I can't wait to find out. Tell me, tell me. All right, listen to this. What's your name? Sophia. How old are you? Ten. What's your favourite sport? Volleyball. And what's your favourite Bible story? Ruth and Naomi. And I hear that you did something special for the podcast this month. What did you do? I illustrated the story that my mum wrote, Emu in the Sky. How exciting. Can kids go and see it on the blog? Yes. Well, thank you so much, Sophia. You're welcome. Oh, Sophia sounds lovely. Yes, and you know what else? What? Sophia's mum wrote the story. <gasps> oh, let's get into the story. Okay, time to listen. The Emu in the Sky, written by Chanel Fiali. Oh, mum, do I have to go? whined Alira. 
It's going to be so boring. Yes, you do. You're not going to spend your whole school holidays at home. Dad and I have to work. You're going to your nan's house. It's in the country with lots of room to run around and play. Now go and pack. We're leaving tomorrow morning. Alira stomped off with a scowl on her face. But the next day, that scowl turned into a smile when they pulled up in Nan's driveway. Whoa, Alira exclaimed. She has cows and chickens and a dog, she laughed, as Baron, Nan's dog, ran to her at full speed, jumping up and licking her face. <laughs> He's happy to see you, said Nan, giving Alira a hug. And so am I. I'll enjoy having your company for the holidays. After saying goodbye to Mum, Alira went off to explore. Baron, she called. Where is he, Nan? He'll be back, said Nan. His name means boomerang. It's in the Kamilaroi language. That's the language of our people. I called him that because he loves to explore, but he always comes back. And just as soon as Nan said that, there he was with a big bone in his mouth. Alira laughed and went off to see the chickens. Nan showed her how to carefully collect the eggs. You know, when I was a girl, we didn't collect chicken eggs, Nan said. We collected emu eggs. They were much bigger than these. Emu eggs? asked Alira. But how did you know where to find them? You didn't have emus in a pen like this, did you? No, said Nan. We had to go looking for them but only at certain times of the year. Tonight, I'll teach you how we knew when it was time to look. Why do I have to wait till tonight? asked Alira. You'll see, answered Nan mysteriously. That night after dinner, Nan rugged Alira up in warm clothes and took a blanket for them to sit on outside. Look up, said Nan. Whoa, exclaimed Alira. I didn't know there were so many stars in the sky. There must be thousands. Trillions, said Nan. The Bible tells us that God knows how many stars are in the sky and he knows them all by name. Isn't that something? They're hard to see with the city lights where you live, Nan continued. But out here, with no lights, you can see them so much easier. There's the Milky Way, said Alira. We learned about it at school. Yes, Nan said. But did you know there's an emu in the Milky Way? What do you mean? asked Alira. Look at the black spaces inside the Milky Way. Nan pointed. If you look really hard, you can see the shape of an emu running. She outlined the shape with her finger. Alira concentrated really hard and then she saw it. I see it, Nan! she shouted. There's the head over there and the body. And it looks like he has one leg on the ground and one in the air. That's it, said Nan. When we were kids, we would look for the emu in the sky. If it was running, like it is now, it meant that the emus were laying their eggs and we could go looking for them. Those eggs are so big. One of them could feed our whole family. In the middle of the year, the legs of the emu would disappear. That meant that male emus were sitting on the eggs, waiting to hatch baby emus. Later in the year, the emu sits low on the horizon. We would say that it was sitting at a waterhole, and usually at that time of the year, the waterholes were full. At the end of summer, when the waterholes were dry, we couldn't see the emu in the sky anymore, and had to wait until this time of year to see it again. It was good news when we saw it and knew we could collect those eggs. I'm so glad I got to see it, said Alira. Me too, said Nan. You know, there's another story about people looking at the stars every night and waiting for good news. It's in the Bible. Do you know what I'm thinking about? Alira thought for a minute. Um, the only one I can think of is the wise men following the stars to find baby Jesus. That's the one, said Nan. I think God used the stars to give good news back then, and he still uses the stars to give good news today. Well, since God has made the emu look like it's running, said Alira, can we go find some emu eggs? Nan laughed. <laughs> I think I'm getting a bit old to be looking for emu eggs. 
But maybe you and Baron can go on an adventure tomorrow and see what you find. Alira smiled. These holidays wasn't going to be boring after all. Oh, I loved that story and it was so special. I loved it too. So interesting. And I love the story of the wise men. <gasps> Me too. Hey, can we listen to Mary's big news while we do the activity book? <gasps> what a great idea. Yes. I love it. There's so much to do. Okay, let's get that done. I'll get my colors and scissors and my craft back. But before we start doing our craft and things, we've got to say goodbye, Poppy. <gasps> I almost forgot. Well, boys and girls, this is actually our last episode for this year. That's right. But we will be back next year in February. With new seasons, new exciting stories Yay! and lots of goodies for you. So we want to wish you a wonderful holidays. Keep safe and we can't wait to come back next year. And we also want to thank you for listening to the podcast because you make it worthwhile. And also for the emails and the pictures. Letters. Yes, we love them. We love getting them. So please write to us all the time. We love you guys. Have a great holiday. Bye. Big hugs from us. Bye. Hmm. I wonder if... I can find an emu in the sky. <laughs> and don't forget that you are Gigi Kids, gorgeous in God's image.